Bonjour tout le monde. Bienvenue au Congrès du Parti Vert de l'Ontario. I can't tell you how much I miss being with you in person. And I want to thank our hardworking GPO staff for transitioning our convention into a virtual one so quickly and seamlessly. And thank you for being supportive and joining us online. I'm delivering this address from Guelph. As a settler on this land, I want to express my gratitude and recognize that I'm on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Adirondack peoples. Today, Guelph and Ontario is home to a number of Métis, Inuit, and First Nations people. The land where I live is the treaty lands of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and is covered under Treaty 3, the Between the Lakes Purchase. I want to reaffirm our party's commitment to the truth and reconciliation process, and I commit to making decisions through the lens of how those decisions benefit the next seven generations in my role as MPP and our role as stewards of this place. We've all been through so much in the past eight months. COVID has affected all of us. It has reaffirmed our shared humanity and the power of caring communities. If you've lost someone to this virus, my heart goes out to you. If you are up late staring at your finances and wondering how you're going to keep a roof over your head or food on the table, I feel your anxiety. This pandemic is a collective experience gripping all of us, but it's also a unique experience that is playing out differently in each of our lives. I am reminded of this every day when I hear from essential frontline workers in long-term care and in hospitals, physically burned out and wondering if they'll get the pandemic pay promised them. I hear from people laid off from their job, wondering if they will ever find stable employment. I hear from people trying to access mental health services or find an affordable place to call home. I hear from people who are isolated and lonely, and from people overwhelmed trying to balance working from home, checking in on the grandparents, and homeschooling their kids. So whatever your challenges, stress, and anxiety, please know that you are not alone. And I hope that our virtual Green Party family can help you stay connected, stay balanced, and stay hopeful about the future. So much has been canceled in 2020 but our connection to each other has not. Our shared purpose to leave a livable planet and a just society for our children and grandchildren, nieces and nephews remain strong. I'm inspired by how fast we've mobilized to help the most vulnerable in our communities. I will never forget the call I received around 5 p.m. on a Friday from the COVID testing center saying that we might have our first COVID positive person in Guelph's homeless population. I made a few quick calls to municipal officials and social service directors who assured me that help was on the way. And sure enough, by Sunday morning, they had solutions in place to house the homeless in ways that enabled physical distancing and self-quarantine. This is one of many examples of how quickly people, communities, businesses, and governments adjusted to our new reality. So many of us have risen to the occasion, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Merci tout le monde, vous avez tout fait une grande différence. The Green Party's efforts to do politics differently is needed now more than ever during this pandemic especially as we've witnessed the devastating consequences of negative partisanship south of the border. I truly believe that people don't want to see parties taking politically motivated pot shots at each other. Disagreements on how we handle the pandemic are to be expected, but they need to be driven by our collective well-being, not by partisan political interest. I've tried to set a model for this at Queens Park. I supported the premier when he closed non-essential workplaces to contain the spread of the virus. 
I have not stood in the way of bills to provide urgent relief for people and businesses, even when I felt they did not do enough. I actually took some heat from the official opposition for supporting an insufficient but essential commercial eviction ban that gave small businesses a chance to stay alive over the summer. Don't get me wrong, I have not been shy in voicing my frustration that the Ford government is failing to help people who are falling through the cracks. Whether it's those on disability benefits not getting the support they desperately need, or long-term care residents who deserve a minimum of four hours of care per day and a funding commitment to deliver it, or children who need safe schools with no more than 15 students per classroom, or tenants who need help paying the rent, or small business owners who need direct financial support, or municipalities who have been begging for help to keep their transit systems alive and to provide shelter so people aren't living in tents. I've worked hard to be a voice for those who need help and have always focused on constructive and pragmatic solutions. And I'm proud to say that the Ontario Greens have made their mark, even during these unprecedented times when all eyes are on those in power. In April, when community gardens were wrongly shut down, we spoke out and advocated for their safe reopening because growing local food will always be an essential service. And the Premier listened. From the outset of this pandemic, I was worried that it was only going to be the Amazons and the Walmarts who would survive and that our downtowns would become ghost towns. So I started lobbying for a ban on commercial evictions so that cafes and barbershops and bookstores could survive this pandemic. And again, the Premier listened. And very soon, I think we'll see the Green Party once again make a big impact in helping people during this pandemic with my bill to permanently remove sick notes for temporary illnesses. If this pandemic has taught us anything, it's that people should stay home and get better when they're feeling sick. My bill is about respect for workers, respect for doctors' time, and respect for public health. It's already passed second reading with all party support, and I'm optimistic that with your help, we can convince the government to work with me to get it past the finish line. Right now, it doesn't seem like there was a time before COVID. But we also did something pretty incredible this time last year. We passed the first ever green law in Ontario's history, a bill to make life a little easier for electric vehicle drivers. It was a small step, but I think it might have been the start of a U-turn for this premier in beginning to make on electric vehicles. One of the first things he did in power was cancel EV rebates and remove EV charging from the building code. But I've been chipping away, asking questions in the legislature, sending him letters, showing him the evidence that the future of transportation is electric. And a few weeks ago, he announced support for EV manufacturing in Oakville and Windsor. That's progress. And it's progress that we Green started. We've also gotten the Premier to back down on some of his worst ideas, like opening the green belt for development. Every time he tries, we blow the whistle and stop him. You sign petitions and write letters, and I amplify your voice in the legislature. That's what having a green MPP at Queen's Park is all about, and why greens matter. This pandemic has been a wake-up call for society to look at what's working and what's not working. It's a chance to choose a new path because the truth is the old path was not sustainable. It was not doing justice to workers, elders, or the planet. Things will not go back to normal anytime soon. And I would argue that they shouldn't go back to normal either. What was normal before COVID-19? Normal was elders neglected in nursing homes. Normal was overcrowded hospitals and hallway medicine. Normal was essential workers being an afterthought or worse, a victim of bad government policy. Normal was an affordable housing crisis. Normal was rising inequality and systemic racism. 
Normal was rising climate pollution and an existential crisis that threatens the livability of this planet. We can and must do better. And that's why I want to talk to you today about choosing a different path. One that learns from the pandemic to reimagine a better future, a greener and more caring future. There's no doubt that we will build back from COVID-19. The question is how. The premier wants to build back recklessly by threatening the people and places we love. Greens say we must build back smarter because the decisions governments make today will impact how we live for generations to come. That is why we released our 10 principles for a green and caring recovery. You can read them at gpo.ca. If we are going to take the actions needed to care for this planet, we have to begin by caring for each other. That care starts in our communities, in our homes and neighborhoods. It starts with a commitment that housing is a human right. It's very difficult to stay home during a pandemic when you have no place to call home. And the bottom line is, is that everyone in Ontario deserves an affordable place to call home. In 2019, 0% of rental housing in cities from Barrie to Kitchener to Ottawa to Hamilton was affordable to a minimum wage worker. If you're looking to buy a home in Toronto, it takes the average person 32 years to save for a down payment. Tent cities are popping up in cities large and small. So I'm proud to say that the green housing discussion paper that we launched last year is sparking a conversation and charting a path forward to solve the housing crisis in Ontario showing how we can create more housing supply for elders wanting to downsize and young people wanting to upsize without paving over precious farmland and green space. Greens are talking about mixed, diverse neighborhoods with townhomes, laneway suites, mid-rise apartment buildings, co-ops, and yes, even tiny homes. It's about building supportive housing with wraparound services for the most vulnerable in our communities. Greens will continue to push for people-centered communities, communities with more green space, parks, beaches, trails, where people can be safe from the virus while being outside. Communities with safe streets for everyone, with more bike lanes and pedestrian infrastructure that is accessible to people of all abilities. Downtowns that are people-centered. In my hometown of Guelph, the expansion of patios onto the streets has been a wild success, strengthening our community, supporting local businesses, and creating a safe space for families in our downtown. These so-called Band-Aid solutions in a time of crisis make a lot of sense for the future. Instead of building more highways and parking lots as the Premier wants to do, let's set aside more urban space for healthy and community-focused living. And while we focus on a building affordable homes and more caring communities, we cannot ignore the last place you wanted to find yourself living during this pandemic, a long-term care home. The sector needs a complete overhaul to prioritize care over profits. Greens will continue to push the government to hire more staff, pay them better wages, and guarantee our loved ones have at least four hours of hands-on care every day. How we treat elders in their final years should be a source of pride, not shame. But this conversation needs to be about a lot more than just long-term care. It should be about giving elders the respect and dignity they deserve. We must help elders to age in place, to stay in their homes and communities, to live with others in co-housing and seniors co-ops. This isn't just about beds and nursing homes. It's about our responsibility, our moral obligation to our parents and grandparents, making sure they are never again forgotten or treated like an afterthought. It means increasing their quality of life and the quality of the food they eat. 
There is no reason that people in nursing homes, hospitals, or any other public institution should be forced to eat crap food that only worsens their health. There is no reason that 17% of children in Ontario are food insecure and trying to learn on an empty stomach. So let's take back the tray, as my friend Chef ja Joshna Maharaj likes to say, and launch a universal school lunch program for students and a healthy food program for long-term care. The truth is that we need to rethink our food system. We need to do more to support local sustainable farmers, helping them get more Ontario fruits and vegetables in our stores and on our plates. A country that cannot feed itself is just as vulnerable as a country that cannot defend itself. And that is why we must protect our farmland, which Doug Ford is chipping away at every day. The new GTA West Highway will pave over 1,500 football fields of prime farmland and threaten ri rivers and wetlands. We're losing 175 acres of farmland every day. That's our food security. Southern Ontario has lost 75% of its original wetlands. That's our drinking water and flood protection. And that is why we must build back smarter. We need a new normal that puts people and planet first. Mm. And here's the hard truth that we must confront. We have another crisis bearing down on us like an out of control freight train. The climate crisis is staring us in the face. And in the same way that we can't wish COVID away, we can't wish the climate crisis away. The window is closing on our ability to avoid catastrophic, irreversible climate change. So billions are gonna be spent putting people back to work and reviving our economy. And we would be fools not to align getting the economy back on track with building back greener. Climate action is job action. The writing is on the wall everywhere, whether it's big banks divesting from fossil fuels, car companies going electric, or global investments flowing into renewable energy. The only thing, the only thing stopping us from leaping into the green economy is the political will. And that's why greens matter. We are building the momentum for a green retrofit program to reduce climate pollution and energy bills, creating thousands of jobs and making our homes, apartments, and buildings healthier. We are building the momentum for a made in Ontario supply chain for electric vehicles and battery storage capitalizing on our skilled labor force and mining and manufacturing to sustainably mine the metals, produce the parts, and assemble the cars, buses, and trains. We are building the momentum to integrate clean tech solutions into our industrial processes. We are building the momentum to take advantage of the rapidly declining cost of renewable energy, putting us on a path to be carbon neutral. So let's be clear that a green economy is not just one powered by the wind and the sun. It's powered by people who take care of each other. That's why we need a guaranteed livable income. That's why we must dismantle systemic racism. That's why we must start thinking about jobs and teaching, mental health, childcare, and the arts as low carbon jobs, because they are. That's why we must invest in protecting nature, creating jobs in ecotourism, outdoor education, and sustainable local food production. I'm worried the Premier wants to do the opposite. His solution to get the economy moving is to rip up protections for our air, our water, our land, and our climate. Did you know that his signature COVID recovery bill dismantled Ontario's environmental process? Doug Ford calls it red tape. I call it protecting the people and places we love. So my friends, this is what we are up against. We are the one party in the legislature that is not only holding this government accountable on its COVID response, 
but also refusing to let Doug Ford get away with his ta- attacks on the places we love and the policies and programs that defend us from the climate emergency. And that's why Greens matter. I'm in the legislature every day making sure this government doesn't roll back environmental protections and climate action under the cover of COVID. Just last week, I caught the government off guard by asking about their plan to destroy a wetland to make way for a mega warehouse. They're doing this sort of thing all over the province, paving over the places we love and the natural areas we need to fight climate change. And we are the only ones calling them out on it, which is why we need to elect more Greens in 2022. We've forced the government to back down on opening the green belt for development. We've passed the first green law in Ontario's history. We've helped small businesses stay alive. And we are so close to taking a step toward restoring worker protections, all with one seat. Imagine what we could accomplish with three seats, five seats or more in 2022. Imagine what we could do with more influence and more power at Queen's Park. I need your help to make it happen. We have to organize, organize, organize. I need you on the phone signing up new members. I need your help in getting good candidates to run. I need your fundraising help to make sure we can run the biggest and best campaign in our party's history. The time for green values is here. The time for green policies is here. The time to elect more Greens is here. And you have the power to make it happen if you work hard to organize, organize, organize. Thank you. Merci. Please stay safe and healthy.